Chapter 23 Thirty years for her was the time for consent. She had struggled to use the most fitting words to manage to live with integrity. She had gone into fight against herself and for herself in the quest for a genuine position. Since a time arrives when it is pointless to lie, this fight brought uselessness, incapacity, her powerlessness to the surface. Since now she had to admit that the course of her history will remain unchanged, that instead of fighting now, she will have to accept it. She imagined that behind the mountain there would be a clearing, radiant sunlight, a mild climate. She had rushed down her slope in dust. After all that effort, that superhuman effort to rediscover the memory, to fight to say things, she had hoped that there would be reassurance. But she had not been offered this magical aspect of life. After the battle, exhausting, agitated, she has to accept it. Because there comes a time when it is pointless to lie. To accept one's blood, to accept one's limits and incapacity. The acceptance, passive, which demands time, only time, while combat demands space. The painful acceptance, because it leaves room for unhappiness. She is living this great silent pain of the wounded. Chapter 24 He had come into her life smiling without meaning it and had installed himself there without her even noticing, all because of a misunderstanding on the Faubourg Saint Antoine. Because history naturally toddles along, far from the tumult of passions, far from the violence of an orgiastic sexuality, above all, far from the romantic idea of love at first sight. He had made his nest close to her. She had let him come without question, because with him, she understood later, she didn't have to be on her guard. At the age of 20, she was sure she wouldn't even have looked at him, not even have taken account of his presence, because she was blindly searching for her well-mounted Prince Charming on his well-mounted white steed, a man who was six feet tall with Michelangelo legs and a Caravaggio look, eyes shining with intelligence which would open a multitude of opportunities for her, a vocabulary encompassing the whole of the Encyclopedia Universalis, and culture to such an extent that he would put the thousand and one questions and answers to shame, and who would offer her flowers every evening and croissant every morning, and who would recite poetry to her in the afternoon while overwhelming her with his caresses. But she had met such Prince Charmings, and if you kissed them too much, they always turned out to be toads in the end. Toad, toad, toad. At the age of 30, she could look at him, welcome him, despite his lack of a horse, despite the fact that he thought the thousand and one questions and answers was shit, despite the fact that he preferred cereal to croissant. 